Are you searching for next level realism for your model railway? Do you like your building lights turning on and off with the flick of a switch? I know I certainly don't. Building lights turning on and off randomly is the next dimension in our search for modeling realism. I've spent a ton of time developing an easy how-to guide on how to put this tech on your layout. Stick around to the end and I'll also show you some other little tips and techniques that I use to get this up and running and get this tech going. So let's talk about some electronic wizardry. What sort of tech are we going to be using for this project? I'll be using a, an Arduino Nano, but you can also use a Mega, an Arduino Mega, or an Arduino Uno. There's another little piece of tech that I'm using that I won't go into too much, so you're gonna to need to hang around to the, the end of the video to find out what I'm doing. So in short, what it's gonna be able to allow you to do is bring this whole system into the DCC world also, which gives you flexibility on how you can control these lights. Watch to the end. You're also gonna need an Arduino-based relay, and I'll go through what sort of power banks you'll need on those for a sec. The reason we need the relays is that the Arduino can only output five volts at a very low current. Using the relay means we can control the coil of the relay using the five volts, and then we can use 12 plus volts DC up to 10 amps to control our lighting like LEDs or incandescent lights, which is more than enough to run what we need to do for this project. So let's talk power supplies. So we, we can either use like a wall wart or a wall transformer at at least 12 volts and at least probably two amps. Or you can do like I do on my layout, which is quite a larger layout where I've got two different lines, one being at five volts, which will run bus where I'll run all my Arduino boards. And then the second bus will be 12 volts that I think from memory around eight amps to run all my lighting and the light. Have you subscribed yet? Click below. Can you click below? So what we'll quickly have a look at is the schematic. So what we're going to do is we'll start with the power supply. So two ways you can power this circuit up is you can, as I did on the bench test, either do USB, obviously out on the layout or something similar to that, or your on your little diorama, you're probably not going to have the USB connection. So the other way of doing it is via the ground pin and also the VI-in. So you can supply a five volt DC power supply to that, and that'll be plenty to, to run what we need to do. So what we'll do, we'll then run across the top here. So we, we'll start with the LED. So we're gonna go digital pin number nine is gonna go up to the anode, and then we'll just quickly run along. So we get a digital pin, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two. So that was all defined in the sketch that we talked about just before. So pins, digital pin two to nine will control these. So what we then need to look at doing is, now obviously LED, you can power it any way you want. You can either have the, the resistor, as my understanding, on the anode or the cathode. So I've chosen to do it on the anode. So then obviously on the cathode, the negative side, I just run that back to a negative bus here, which is connected on the ground of the Arduino. So each LED has one of those. So, so that's pretty well just the connection. So it's, it's quite easily connections to this. So what we'll quickly look at now is the sketch now. I will put a, a link somewhere up here above um, to my last video where I do a, a much more of a deep dive into the sketch. So I'm just gonna show you if you've just landed on this video, what the sketch looks like. I won't go into all the intimate details about it. Go into that link, uh, watch that video first and putting these two together will ultimately come up with the concept that you're gonna see at the end of this video. So ultimately here we got the Arduino sketch that you upload to the Arduino. So as I said, link above will show you a bit more intimate detail what this is all about. I just wanted to quickly show you what a sketch might look like if you're new to this. Don't be daunted by this. It's very easy just to change a few things as I explained in that previous video. And it's just a matter of uploading it to the, to the Arduino and then Bob's your mother's brother, away you go. Um, you're, you're good to go. Before I move on, we'll have a quick little interlude from my sponsor, PCBWay. 
Over to you guys. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. We are seriously missing out. We're passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding, or CNC machining, assembly, or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below, and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. What we're going to look at now is the actual connections in its very crudest form, how we actually get this working. So in the middle there, in the middle here, we've got the Arduino Nano. This is the version three model. doesn't really matter what model you use. They'll all work. Now we'll methodically go through the connections so you know how to connect this up. So as, as I said before, there's two ways we can power this up. You can either power this up via the USB connection here, or like I do on the layout, I use a five volt Arduino power bus, which is DCC, which is indicated by this five volt DC, or I'm gonna call that little transformer. So how we power that up is using the ground pin and the VIN pin. And that'll give it nice clean five volts to power this little guy up. The other component we've got working here is the Arduino relays that I spoke about before. So just a little bit on these relays. So if you liken one of these relays as a, a channel, so the one out on my layout room, I've got, I'm using two of these. So I've got eight different channels. What that, all that means is I use eight input pins to control the relay here. So how I will then wire that up is simply just as it goes here, each one of these outputs from the coil side of the relay connects to a group of buildings. So I'll group my buildings not right next to each other because I don't think it's all that prototypical that building lights are switching on and off randomly if they're right next to each other. So I have sort of picked different parts of the layout, um, or sorry, different parts of the Barham town that I'll show you in some footage coming up shortly. So the connections for the relay are reasonably simple. So we've got, I'll point you to the very, which is the v, JD VCC and the VCC. Now, I won't go into too much about what what these actually do. There's some other videos about why we do that with so we don't destroy our Arduino Nano effectively. So we'll start with the JD VCC. That needs a five volt input from I take it from the Arduino Nano and the VCC needs an external five volts, which is this little guy here. Then the ground, you can take the ground from either this portion of the Nano or you can even take it from the pin above. So there's two ground pins on uh, the Nano. So that goes to the ground pin of the relay. And then these green wires here are what I'm gonna control, the control pins. So, so those pins there, you've got in one, two, three, and four. I'm only showing you three channels at this point in time. And they'll go to however you define your, what pins you're using on your, in your sketch. So this one's nine, uh, D9, 10, and 11. But as I said, I use two banks of these. So I'll use eight digital pins. On the flip side of this, where this system works really well is the Arduino is only switching these little optio couplers here, which in turn will turn the, the relay on and off. So it'll go from normally open and normally closed, which are these pins along the front here. So the other power supply we need is 12 volt DC. As I said, mine's, I think from memory around about eight amps. This little guy will take up to 30 volts DC at 10 amps on the, the DC seat. DC side of things. So it's just a matter of running sort of common into the norm, into the common, which is the middle of each one of these. So I'll run a positive, and then out of the, the negative side, I'll run a, a common sort of rail into this terminal strip. The normally open pin, which is these bottom ones, will run out to the terminal block as well. When this, the sketch switches, the various random outputs it just turns these on and off which in turn effectively is controlling the positive output of this 12 volt dc transformer so in, in turn that'll turn the lights on and off 
on, on your buildings. So the beauty of this system is you might be wondering, yes, um, LED lights of don't take a lot of voltage. However, I have a few older incandescent light street lights from Weissman on my layout. So this allows me, and they need 12 volts. So this allows me to interchange both of these. You just gotta make sure uh, LEDs you're using within your buildings, your street lights or whatever, are correctly protected with the correct resistor. This next little bit, it's something I've incorporated into my full on log railway. You can see that this schematic is very similar. However, we've got a few extra components. Now, this is a design I came up with. So I've been able to make a DCC decoder with a Arduino Nano also. And also my DCC interface is used on this. And I will link in the description below regarding that. I did do a video on how I made that. So what we were doing before is, so you can obviously see the DCC side of things up on this top right hand corner. Now, all the other, all we're doing here is this DCC decoder is basically an electronic on and off switch that we can control via a DCC command. In my case, address number one on this example. So what we're able to do is we're effectively controlling the five volt DC input into the lighting function Arduino. So previously we had the five volt going straight into the VIN pin. And soon as we turned on that transformer, it would effectively turn on this circuit and our lighting would go on. So I didn't want that. So this is what I've come up with. So now we're instead of once we turn this five volt transformer on, all it's going to do is it's going to go travel into the common, go into the common feed of this Arduino relay. So once this is activated or turned on by the DCC decoder, it's effectively going to turn this circuit on which will allow the lighting function Arduino to power up and then that'll turn the lights on. So let's go through quickly through the connections for this. So there's not too many more connections, there's sort of two parts to it. All right, so we've got the DT DCC interface. So we've got the DCC interface there and those two wires there indicate the DCC feed in from your accessory bus. And from the interface, it needs a ground connection and it also needs a five volt connection as, as before. So this five volt is a five volt output, not a five volt input. So just be very mindful of that. So where we get the five volt input is the input is to here, the VIN in, that goes to our transformer. And then the ground side of things, or the negative in this case, goes back to this transformer also. Then, we need a what they call an interrupt pin which is goes on to uh, digital decoder pin number two so this is all explained in the video when i when i make this uh, interface so from this decoder we are making on address number dcc address number one and you can make it whatever you want depending on how you set up the sketch within the dcc decoder the dcc decoder sketch so then that address number one that then goes to the input four of the relay bank, which will then in turn control this relay four down here. So it's not uh, any, any smoke and mirrors. So then what we actually do is, as I explained briefly before, we've got the common of the relay here, this center pin, and that goes back to the DCC, sorry, the five volt DC. So when the relay gets turned on via the DCC decoder, it connects these two together, which in turn gives five volt DC to the VIN pin, which then turns on the, the Arduino and our lighting function. Then, then obviously the banks one through to three turn on and our lighting functions work. So probably what you're asking here now is how do I control this via a DCC command? So there's two ways I do it. So you can either do it off your remote control, your switch commands, which is inherent to the controller. I use a, a Z21, a Roco Z21 controller, and how that might come about. So I, as I said before, I'm using address, a DCC address number one and number two. So it's something I haven't showed you in this, but it's the same process um, is I've got two buttons now. Up on the screen here is my train controller, what they call a switchboard. Currently the lights you can see are off. 
So we got BS building lights, so that's my Barham station building lights. And I'll just quickly go into the justification. So you can see there, that's how I set the address to address number one. And the other one I've got here is my street lights. So the, the streeting lights, you don't want to be turning off randomly. So normally they'll turn on at a given time um, around dusk, and then they'll turn off around in dawn um, the next day. So I didn't want them attached to the function decoder. I just wanted to be able to control them independently. So this, the, my, my street lights are not actually a part of the system that we're, we're talking about today. It's just a, another little side project that I, that I worked on that I can still control it via the DCC. As explained, um, that is address number two. So that then in turn can also be controlled via the remote via number what we'll actually do now we'll go over to the layout room and i'll show you how this is all put together and what it actually looks like all right so we're crossing the layout room in the full log railway so this is the barham town that i was telling you about in the the main part of the video so i'll just bring up the the dcc address number one so the switch command if i now turn that on you'll see that the lights will all cycle through that's just to know that the, the system's working but that i'll only do that once at startup so then what I'll do, I'll see, I'll bring up address number two. And you'll see that it'll turn on all the, most of the porch lights and also the street lights. Now, the reason why that is, is because I didn't want them turning on and off as we've discussed. Now with the time set on the sketch is on, from memory between one and two minutes. So you can change that out to 10, 20 minutes or whatever you want to do. But for the sake of this, uh, this for the sake of me showing you this at this point in time, I put it down to, I can't remember, I think it was one or two minutes on the, on the sketch. So this is the end of the video. So a few takeaways. I personally like the DCC stationary decoder aspect that I've designed here. Now, for the takeaways or questions that I want that uh, I'd ask you to, to put in the comments below. Um, is this the type of lighting system that you may implement on your layer? If so, would there be any way that you would customize the, the system to better suit your needs? Any suggestions on how I might be able to do this uh, better? It's a very cheap system and it's a lot of fun to build. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to let YouTube know that it's a good video. Make sure you comment below, uh, which also feeds the, uh, the YouTube algorithm and hopefully helps my channel out.